Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of the Cog Yarns podcast. My name is Colleen, and I am the face and creator behind Cog Yarns. You can find me on various social media. My main one is Instagram. I post pictures of yarn that I've dyed, projects that I've completed, uh, projects that are currently on my needles, there's the occasional giveaway, and there's always information about the next shop update. You can also find me on Etsy, which is where my shop is located, as well as Ravelry. And I'll post the links and the information down below so you can check me out if you're interested. So I thought today what I would just do a bit of an introduction about who I am, as well as I'll show you some projects that I have completed, I'll show you what's currently on my needles, and I will also show you some yarn that I'm thinking about making into a project and I haven't quite decided. So we'll get into all of that. So just to start, I live in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada with my husband Tyler and our two pet rabbits, Hector and Harriet. Uh, we've both lived here our entire lives. Um, this is where we went to school and this is where we call home. I went to university uh, and majored in violin performance. I play in two different groups. Uh, we play at a lot of weddings, uh, corporate functions, casinos, as well as some recitals. So that keeps me quite busy. I arrange quite a bit of music for our groups um, and there's a lot of prep that goes into it. Um, I also work at the university four days a week and then I'm also in charge of cog yarns, which is very exciting for me. I learned how to knit when I was about grade five. Uh, I believe my mom taught me and there was an after school knitting group for our class. I believe that everybody just made a square and then the teacher knit the squares together to make a blanket. My memory is a little fuzzy about it but I think that's where it all originated. I picked up knitting again when I was in university but I didn't have a whole lot of time so it was kind of a a half effort, if you will. <laughs> and then I started knitting pretty much obsessively as an adult once I was in university. And that's where we are now. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll just start with uh, some projects that I have recently made. I'm going to start with the sweater that I'm wearing right now. Uh, this is the So Faded by Andrea Mori. I'm just going to stand up so you can take a look at it. There we go. So I cast this on in April and I was working on some other projects at the time so it took me a little bit longer than I was expecting but I I finished it, uh, it was about mid-September. So if that gives you an idea of how slow of a knitter I am. <laughs> I also knit a couple pairs of socks in between that so, so yeah. Uh, this kit uh, the yarn that I'm using, sorry, the kit is available in my shop. I have it as a single ply as well as the sock, the 80-20, so it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. That's my main sock base. Um, it's available as a pre-order. If you're interested, I have on my website that it takes about uh, 7 to 10 days to produce and ship. I'm usually a little bit faster than that, but I just wanted to give myself a little bit of a buffer. But uh, if you're interested, uh, just let me know. Okay, so project, other projects that I've, I have made. I'm going to start with this pair of socks. As you can tell, it's very similar to the sweater that I'm wearing. I use the leftover yarn. And as you can also tell, I haven't tied in all the ends yet. But, but. So this, if you can see it against the sweater that I'm wearing. I'm just going to hold it up. And I hope it focuses. There we go. So I made a pair of socks out of my leftover yarn. I had quite a bit of leftover yarn actually. I still have enough that I could probably make another pair of socks for myself. 
I have fairly small feet, they're size 6, so it doesn't take a whole lot of yarn to knit the foot part. And the ankle I didn't make quite as long. Generally I make a taller ankle, but I've been finding that I just, they fall down sometimes and I really just wanted to try a shorter ankle. So these are my socks. I'm very happy with how they turned out. And I'm going to move on to a tiny sweater. Before I knit this a sweater for myself, I'd never really made a sweater and I was really unsure of the construction of it. I didn't fully understand the start to finish process. So I wanted to try <laughs> just a tiny one so it wasn't a huge commitment. So I made the tin can knits. tiny sweater. It's in the smallest size. I believe it is zero to three months. And I knit it out of, I forget the colorway and I lost the label, but it is made out of uh, tennis fiber arts. And once I'd done this, the construction of a sweater really started to make sense. So then I felt more confident that I could make an adult size one without without having to frog it multiple times, which luckily I didn't have to do, so that was really exciting. So here's my tiny sweater. I think I'm going to give this to a friend. I have a friend who is expecting a baby right now, so she might like this. Okay, so moving on. I also have, and I might have to back up because this is quite large. I made another Andrea Mori pattern. And I'm going to have to look up the name of it. Why can't I think of it? This is what it looks like. This is the wrap and it's double layer. If you can see. So I, I put on these buttons so that I can wear it properly. This is the pattern. These are the colors I use. This is just a custom kit that I made myself. I didn't actually name it. I just knit the colors that I really wanted. <laughs> and then I made this for myself. And I have to say, I wear this all the time. I wear this at least twice a week. I wear it to work, I wear it around the house. It's just so cozy. It's made out of worsted yarn, so it's quite warm. And, um, uh, in the fall and the winter, it gets quite cold here. Canada, this part of Canada is quite cold in the winter. We get a lot of snow, it gets really cold. It gets to be about like minus 40, sometimes even colder. So layers are our friends. And this is what I wear. I just love it. Okay, so what is currently on my needles is in this bag. Now my mom made this bag for me. As you can tell, it has rabbits all over it, which is why I love it. <laughs> also because my mom made it. Um, and inside, I am currently working on, and I'll show you the pattern. It's Mary Margaret's Lace Tam. And I know the picture isn't in color. I was trying to save my printer ink so that, that gives you an idea of what it's going to look like, kind of. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And this is what I've got so far. And again, this was just a custom colorway that I dyed myself. My favorite color is purple. <laughs> so, so I just threw some purple dye into the pot and I knew that whatever came out I would wear. And I'm a little tangled right here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to try and put this on without poking myself in the eye with the needles. <laughs> but this is where I am so far. And hopefully I'm wearing this correctly. It looks like there's various ways you can wear it. You can pull your, your hair to the front so that it's not pulled back. So I still got a ways to go. I'm going to close this up. And I'm debating about how slouchy I want to make it. The pattern seems to have it quite... Uh, form-fitting, 
I've seen other people that made it quite slouchy in the back. I'm not quite sure how I want to finish this. I'll zoom in so you can take a look at it. It's really cozy. I made this out of, um, it's 80% superwash merino, 10% uh, nylon, and 10% cashmere. So it's really, really soft, which is what I was hoping for because it's on my head. I just love the lace pattern. I can't get over it. And then, this is the third time I've cast this on, which is <laughs> kind of embarrassing. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this, but the first time I cast it on, I misread the pattern and you're supposed to add, you're supposed to move the stitch marker, knit a stitch, and then put the, the stitch marker back after that. And I forgot to do that. So the pattern was all wonky and it didn't look good. And so I had to rip it out and I completely ripped it out because I wanted to try a different cast on so that it was super stretchy. Um, and then the second time I cast it on, <laughs> I used the larger needles. I forgot to bump down to the smaller needles. So it was really big. It was like way too big for my head. And I finished all the ribbing and realized, oh darn it, I have to start again. So I ripped it out again. <laughs> so third time's the charm, hopefully. So this is my hat. I'm hoping to wear this most of the winter. It might be a little bit I'm not sure if it'll be quite warm enough because of the lace pattern. It has the holes in it. It can be quite windy here. My hair is kind of all over the place, but it can get quite windy. And so the wind will probably just go right through this. But we'll see. I can always put my hood over top of it. So, or I just make another hat. That's always an option, right? <laughs> well, this is my hat. I love it. It's purple. It's soft. All right. So moving on to a project that I'm thinking of doing, I really want to make a gigantic shawl that I can wrap myself up in multiple times. <laughs> um, I've been looking at various patterns and I'm thinking, because I love Andrea Mulray's pattern so much, I'm thinking of doing the uh, finder fade. And I have a lot of options and <laughs> I don't know what to do yet. So I'm thinking of doing it in single ply and I'm just going to grab some of these skeins that I have here. These are all skeins that I've dyed myself and I can't decide if I want to do more on the pinky side or if I want to do more green or more blue. I wear a lot of black so pretty much any color would go but I'm going to show you what I've got so far. Um, so this is the first game, and hopefully I can get it to pick up properly. There we go, that looks better. So as you can tell, it has a lot of creams, a lot of pinks, some blues, there's a hint of mint at the, at the end here. I just kind of pull it apart. You can see that. So this is the first skein. And I'm thinking of pairing it with a darker pink. This has brown speckles, a little bit of orange, um, some darker pinks. Did I say brown? It has brown. This is what this one looks like. And maybe it's trying to pick up on my head, so I'll just do this. So I can see how these two would fade together. And then for the third skein, I think I might pick up this one. And now this is a deeper pink. It's got speckles of purple blotches of, it's almost black, but it's not quite. Uh, there's some deep purple in it. I 
I just love this skein. I think it is gorgeous. But then this is where I kind of ran into trouble. So I got these three and then I could go the way of yellow. So I could put yellow and there's bits of pink and black speckles in this. I don't know if you can see that. It's not going to zoom properly. Focus properly, I mean. So I could go that way and include some yellows. I don't know, what do you think? Would that work? Or I could take it in a totally different direction and I could go more greens. So we've got these four so far as so a maybe. Or, and I have some greenies with blue. This is just so soft. I could just squish this. Every time I pick up a skein, and get squished. But I could do something like that and then put this one with it. This has some very light pinks, greens, some blues. Can you focus for me? There we go. So I could do those two together and then I also have, I'll just squish them all together so you can see. And of course you need, I believe it's seven skeins, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So these would I, I so far have six skeins. What do you think? Would that make an okay fade? But I'd need to add one more. So this is where I'm not sure. Should I grab one from the pink? section and throw it into the greens. It's too much to hold up in one shot, but I just can't decide. I like them all. <laughs> so this is where I'm at. That's what I'm currently working on. So once I finish my hat, then I'm going to make a giant shawl so before it gets too, too cold so that I can really enjoy it all winter. And yeah currently what's going on with my projects. I'm a fairly monogamous knitter. I find that if I have too much going on that I kind of abandon one project <laughs> and then the other one gets finished and then I go back to the other one. So I don't know if that's really truly monogamous. I don't know. I kind of like to do one thing at a time before I lose interest in it and finish it to completion. But that's just me and that can always change, you know. So the next shop update will be this Friday, uh, which, you know, just let me check, is Friday, October, October the 6th. So right before Canadian Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hope you eat lots. <laughs> um, so yes. I don't have any skeins to show you right now. They're currently wet. They're on. They're drying right now. Um, but I'll have that up at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you need to convert the time changes, uh, Google is really good. That's where I do all of my research. Uh, so I hope to see you there. So in the meantime, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye.